Here I thought I'd make a video where we go through the process of writing a problem and then solving it. And so the first thing that you want to do is make sure that the problem is solvable in the first place. And that'll be actually most of the work. So I like these problems where you solve polynomial type equations over the natural numbers and only get a few solutions. So I thought we'd write a problem like that. So here, let's start off by saying that we want to find all x, y, and the natural numbers such that some equation is satisfied. Now, what equation will that be? So looking through some old contests, I saw this type of problem appear several different times that had the left-hand side looking like x cubed minus y cubed. So in other words, it's a difference of cubes. And then in each of these, the right-hand side took on a couple of different shapes. But since we're trying to create something a little bit original, maybe I'll say that the right-hand right -hand side looks like 2xy plus some number. But not any number will work because most numbers will actually give us no solution over the natural numbers. So I'll put a capital N here and then we'll determine what that capital N needs to be. So this is the basic shape of our problem, but we need to determine an N so this works out nicely. Okay, so what will our first step be? Well, we'll think about how to solve this first, and then through the solution process, we'll get a method to tweak this value of N. Well, let's notice that this right-hand side is most definitely positive. Well, that is as long as we take n to be positive, but we should probably do that. That means that the left-hand side is also positive, which means that x is strictly bigger than y. So let's maybe take that as the first thing that we notice. x is most definitely strictly bigger than y, which means we can write x as y plus z for some z, which is also a natural number. Okay, so now let's throw this into our equation and see what we have. So that gives us y plus z quantity cubed minus y cubed equals two times y plus z times y plus n. Okay, so that's what we've got after this substitution. But now let's multiply this out. We can multiply this out using a standard binomial expansion. So that'll give us y cubed plus three y squared z plus three y z squared plus z cubed, and then we have this minus y cubed, which just comes down. Then over here on the right-hand side, we'll have something that looks like 2y squared plus 2yz plus our number n. Okay, so let's do some simplification and move some things around. The most obvious simplification is to cancel this and this out. We can also take this guy right here and move it over to be combined with this y squared term right here. And then likewise, we can take this yz term right here and combine it with this, which is really of the form y times z times z. We'll have y squared times 3z minus 2. So that comes from this purple bit, which I've written on the previous line. And then we'll have that is added to yz times 3z minus 2. And so that's from this yellow bit on the last line. And then finally, we bring this plus z cubed down equals n. But now let's notice from this that we get a bound on z. And that bound is going to be in terms of n. So let's look at that. So the bound on z goes like this. So this stuff that's overlined in purple and yellow is positive. So that means if we get rid of it, we create something smaller. That means z cubed is less than or equal to n. So let's write that. z cubed is less than or equal to n, which tells us that z is less than or equal to the cube root of n. So that gives us a bound there. So that means z will only take on a finite number of values depending on what n is. And now we're into cooking up kind of a nice solution here. 
So let's maybe keep it really, really simple and say that our solution will occur when z is equal to one. So we could pick any value of z to construct a solution, but I think picking z equals one is maybe the easiest. So let's see what happens when z is equal to one. That's gonna collapse this to something quite nice. y squared plus y plus one equals n. So now we've got a quadratic equation in y which should be fairly easy to decide when it has a nice solution. So let's see, we can simplify that to y squared plus y plus one minus n equals zero. So that means this number one minus n must factor in a way so that when you combine its factors, you get the number one. Well, this is gonna be negative, so the factors will one be positive and negative, so they'll subtract to give us one. So that means we need something like three times four or four times five or five times six or six times seven, or maybe we'll use eight times nine. So that means we would want all of this to be equal to negative 72, which means our N would be equal to 73. Notice if we get negative 72 here, that means this guy factors as y minus eight times y plus nine equals zero. And in turn, we see that y is equal to eight and thus x is equal to nine, given that z is one and x is y plus z. So that gives us a solution in this case when n is equal to 73. Like I said, we're trying to construct an equation in the first place. So I think we've constructed a nice equation that has a solution. And now from here, let's say that we have finished writing our problem. So let's say our problem is finished writing as find all x and y in the natural numbers such that x cubed minus y cubed equals 2xy plus 73. And now we'll finish this video off by sketching a quick solution to this written problem. Although we'll skip quite a few steps as they're hidden in this exploration that we've done. Now we're ready to finally look at a careful solution to this problem that we've written. So that is, we're going to find all natural numbers x and y such that x cubed minus y cubed equals 2xy plus 73. On the last board, we determined that this 73 would be a nice number to put here. We could have like played it a little bit more complicated and chosen this number two and the number 73, but I chose the two ahead of time just kind of at random. Okay, so let's recall that we made the observation initially that x had to be bigger than y, so that means we could write x as y plus z for a natural number z. And then from there, we came up with this equation in y and z. And so let's notice that from this equation, we see that z cubed is less than or equal to 73. Okay, which is in turn strictly less than 125. Well, why did I pick 125? Because that's the first cube which is larger than 73. The cube which is smaller than 73, or the first one which is smaller than 73 would be 64, that's four cubed. Okay. So let's notice that this tells us that z is strictly less than five. That means z comes from the set one, two, three, four. Okay, and now that we've got it down to a manageable number of values of z, we can split this into cases. So case number one would be the case when z is equal to one. But that reduces to the equation that we solved on the last board. So that's y squared plus y plus 1 equals 73. And if I recall correctly, that gave us y equals 8 and x equals 9 as our solution. But now we have to work through each of these one at a time. Likely, this is the only solution because this number 73 was built so that we had a solution with z was equal to 1. But maybe we got lucky and there are more solutions. I'll just check one more and leave the others as homework. You can maybe post in the comments if there are solutions for the others. So let's see, for our second case, we'll take the case when z is equal to two. 
So that means we have six minus two, that is four y squared. And then here we'll have four times two, so that is plus eight y. Then two cubed is eight equals 73. So we have something that looks a little bit like that. But now let's notice that that reduces to 4y squared plus 8y minus 65 equals 0. Now you can easily check here that there are no solutions in the natural numbers. So I'll let you guys check that. You can just do it maybe with the quadratic formula. You'll notice that the discriminant is not a perfect square. So no solutions in n. Okay, so that means we get no solutions in this second case. And I'll leave the third and the fourth case. In other words, the cases when z is equal to three and four as little nice homework exercises. So maybe post what you get in the comments and maybe use this technique to come up with your own similar problem and post that in the comments as well. And that's a good place to stop.